Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, we have from Falcon Watt on the Discord. Hey Cap, what happens if you send multiple laser designators to the same laser code? Would the laser guided bomb give priority or would it shuffle confused between two or more designated areas? And if it does give priority, who's the priority? Player laser? Buddy laser? Ground JTAC laser? Opponent's laser? Again, keep up the amazing work. Couldn't have learnt a lot of the modules without your help. Smile, my pleasure. And I thought I'd put my own request in here because it's just a good point to put it. How accurate are laser guided bombs? So let's go and set this up. So first, let's look at the accuracy that we're going to achieve with the GBU. We've got a GBU 12 on here. Everything else is pretty much standard. Let's get everything set up. I'm going to go air to ground. Select the bomb. Mode. Mm, auto, I guess, is what we're going to use every time. Electronic fuse off. We don't want the bomb to explode code we want to change the code so let's just go to our backup code there that is everything done there let's go to our teapod blur there uh, laser designator on ufc here laser designator clear it 1588 to set the designator laser to 1588 prf sign soy Speed and ease, set to the waypoint, waypoint designate. Let's double check, we've got our little guy there. We're going to aim right at his uh, center mass as he meets the ground. So, other than that, we just need to press and hold the weapon release button. So, off we go. 14 seconds to go. It's going to be a bomb nice and comfortably sent. We want that, ver that bomb to come almost vertically down on him, ideally, would give us maximum accuracy, I think. But going to be a little bit difficult to do that. 10 seconds till the laser fires automatically. We'll just keep it nice and slow here. Laser is now firing. Let's go and watch the bomb. And there he is. Zap. Let's just pause. So laser guided bombs are one of the most accurate weapons on the battlefield in terms of guided weaponry. The advantage over a GPS INS type of weapon is its accuracy and the fact it can be used against a moving target. I've been told by Eagle Dynamics, expect within two feet accuracy with a laser guided weapon, which means that even with the fuse turned off, which is what we're going to have now, we can physically hit the guy with the bomb and just take him down with the carcass of the bomb, which is really impressive. You can't do that with a GPS INS guided weapon because depending who you speak to, an absolute maximum of nine feet and sometimes up to 30 feet, depending on various parameters. So this is quite comfortable. Let's see what we can achieve. How slow can we make it go? Oh, it disappeared. But look at that, we got him. I mean, look at that there. Amazing. We physically got that bomb within 10 inches of a centre mass and obviously is down. So we can actually, as apparently we can in real life, take out a dude or anything else, but a dude, which is a special, or a rabbit, or maybe even a small insect with the carcass of the bomb which is really interesting, isn't it? The next thing that we'll do is go and look at multiple lasers and how it confuses a bomb. Welcome back. Now we're gonna test what happens when we've got multiple laser designators in a similar area with the same PRF or the same laser code. We've got me here, we've got JP here. Say hello, JP. Hello. We've also got a AI JTAC. He's just, there he is. He's gonna be shining a third laser on another target. So the Reaper will be firing an AI based designator at that vehicle there. I will be firing one at this Challenger here. JP will be firing one at the BM27 here. It's literally just waypoint one, so designate waypoint one, laser it. We're all gonna be using the same PRF. Now a quick tiny bit of really obvious science of how this works. You've got two types that I'm aware of, of laser guided weapon. One, a beam rider like a Vickers, where it will literally ride along or around a laser beam and hit a target that way. Now that's almost impossible for that to have problems with multiple lasers because it would only cause a problem if another laser crossed through its laser beam at exactly the time when the missile was meeting that intersection. The chances of that happening on a battlefield is pretty much zero. So that's not a problem as far as I'm aware. And then you get the more common type, the laser designated weapon, like a GBU weapon or a laser guided Maverick weapon, for instance. And this is where we use a laser designator to fire laser radiation at a target that then splashes off, it bounces off, and that radiation will have a certain PRF, pulse repetition frequency. You may know that as a laser code by default 1688. The passive seeker head in the weapon will listen or look for that splash and then by means that I don't really understand, guide itself onto the origin 
of the splash. So in real life, with these three targets all within about 500 feet, what would happen to the real bomb? Obviously, I don't know, but I would say there's a very high percent chance that it would just mess up and wouldn't guide at all. Well, why is that? It's because it's, like I said, listening for that certain PRF splash bouncing off. And if that splash is coming from three different places, there is no way it could seek on a target. You know, I wonder if it would even hit in between them. It'd be very interesting to know how that would work. But I'm almost certain it, it wouldn't know how to choose or hit one of those targets. I, I don't think it's just designed for it. Hence why in conflict you would have laser PRF deconfliction. This guy would want to have one laser code, that guy would have one, and this guy would have a third. How is it going to happen in DCS? I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to have the feeling, probably, that it just magically knows which one is your laser. That's what my guess is going to be, but that's a pure guess. JP, any thoughts you have? Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Let's uh, give it a go. I'm going to uh, watch the top right of the screen. He should tell us, uh, the AI JTAP should tell us what he's lasing. So I'm going to go master arm on. I'm going to go... Okay, he is lasing a BM, a Eurogar. He's lasing the big MLRIS on the left, so you get the first of the BMPs, if you can find that. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, mode auto, electronic fuse, uh, instant, code. Everyone's on 1688 to purposefully conflict. Enter, that's that done. There's a designator ROM. Uh, get the flare up, get the flare up. Uh, assign waypoint one, which we've done. Assign manual lasing. Otherwise, I've got 50 seconds or so to just travel. Uh, have you found your target? I found a line of BMPs, I think. Get the one uh, that's on our side. Or the yeah, one that's... It. Right, my bomb's out. I'm now lazing manually. The bomb won't pick anything up until it gets within its passive seeker cone, which is about, I don't know, 10 degrees or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is. You'll see it when it catches. So just wait patiently. It's caught one. I don't know whose it's caught, but it's caught someone's. It's not acting unusually. It just looks like it's guiding a norm. It's going for, and that's interesting. Actually, I can't tell. Make sure I'm lazing, and I am. JTAC's definitely lazy. It's gone for your one. That's my, that's what I'm lazy. Well, definitely. isn't that interesting? Yeah. There you go, yeah. What was the logic behind that? So it didn't have, it wasn't switching between, you know, it wasn't kind of going, oh, I'm going to go for that one. Oh, I'm gonna, it locked onto one. I found it. I'm pretty sure it couldn't do that in real life, I think because there's, there's just no logic. Then should we try it again? Because we're doing this scientifically, we need repeatability now. So we're literally just gonna, back to spectators, try it again and see if it goes for yours every time. And if it does, it could be like it's the last one that was laid or the first one that was laid. No, the first one's maybe, always gonna be the JTAC. Maybe it's, maybe it's catching, maybe it's catching the first one it sees as it, as it well, like, that would be yours. to the ground, which that, is mine, exactly. Which is yeah. yours. Well, let's go and try that again, shall we? Drop and lays manually. Right, same thing, guys, it won't lock onto it won't even see any of those lasers until it becomes in its field of view which is like a kind of three-dimensional cone like a car headlight that comes out of the front it's found one might be interesting to see which one it gets or it could be random or you just don't know do we until i'd say that's going for you again let's go for the same one again yeah exactly. almost certainly then yeah. as its uh cone of detection slews downwards okay so the only way to now disprove that is if i attack from it if we if I attack from a different angle, if you know what I mean. Okay. Or yeah, we'll yeah. we just swap targets. Why don't we just swap targets? So I'm going to go for your one. You go for my tank on the right. Dropped. My laser is on. Just try not to pull out the sky now. Okay, follow the weapon. Let's see pick it up. Okay, it's picked it up. So it should see all three lasers in its, in its field of view now, but it knows. It's decided to go, yeah, it's going to go for the same. It's going to go for that one again. Must be, must be literally the first one it sees. Yeah. Ping. Done. Very good. So badly, viewers, it turned out it was really simple. The way it works in DCS is once the weapon is in a position where it can see one or more of the lasers, the first laser it finds in its logic of possession for lasers, it makes that the laser. Would that work in real life? Personally, I don't think so. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the real life doesn't really work like it does in the game. The real life is physically looking for that radiation bouncing off, whereas in the game, obviously, that part of it's not modeled per se. That was an easy one. Uh, JP, anything you can think of adding to that? Oh, really? I've enjoyed that. See you later.